Hi and welcome to Thought Catalyst. Today's video is going to be a somewhat topical one as we're going to be covering the spread of viruses. We're aware of the seriousness of the ongoing situation, but due to the way that the YouTube algorithm is demonetizing videos right now, we're going to have to replace the word ca with... Wait, wait, why are you bleeping that one? I'm explaining what I can't say. Okay, okay, can you at least show them what we're talking about? Really? We're censoring that as well? <sighs> Fine. Well, as I was going to say, within the last 100 years, we as a species have come face to face with many outbreaks. They've resulted in worldwide panic, economic instability, and social repercussions. As we all know, currently the world is struggling to contain the largest epidemic in decades. Due to the ever-increasing connectivity across the world, infectious diseases pose huge threats. International travel, large gatherings, and larger populations have increased the chances of transmission from person to person, country to country, and continent to continent. As a result of the highly transmissible environment, constant disease surveillance is paramount. The first and maybe most vital stage of disease surveillance is the accurate and truthful reporting of all suspected and confirmed cases. This is carried out by governments and the World Health Organization. If this primary stage is carried out successfully, we can accurately follow the transmission, the transmission rate, and even track down potential cases to try and contain the disease. Unfortunately, accurately tracking an outbreak can be highly problematic for a whole range of reasons. Many countries around the world may simply not have enough test kits, or equally as likely, countries may not have the most up-to-date kits to use, resulting in an undercount of confirmed cases. To make counting these cases even harder, there are countries who try to underrepresent and suppress the figures as an attempt to reduce public unrest, mitigate economic downturns, and ensure that the government's image looks as strong and stable as possible. This inaccurate recording of cases makes it extraordinarily hard to accurately track and monitor the disease. Many novel diseases within the 21st century are initially spread to humans through contact with animals. Once a person has been admitted to a hospital and tests run, authorities will aim to quickly find out where the person has been, what the source may be, and who that person has recently been in contact with. If this step is carried out well, it will help find other individuals who may need medical attention. And if carried out perfectly, it can stop the disease in its tracks. A large problem with new outbreaks is that since nobody has ever come in contact with them before, no one will have built up a pre-established immunity. Other diseases like the common flu, chickenpox, or even measles are either vaccinated for or are common enough that people have developed an immune response through previous exposure. This lack of immunity makes these new illnesses exceedingly more transmissible, allowing them to spread across the world at breakneck speeds. Whilst the media would like you to believe that the world is helpless to these new diseases, behind the scenes, there is an unimaginable amount of work going on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 12 months a year. Virologists, epidemiologists, and a wide range of infectious disease experts from across the world act as a global alert mechanism. Monitoring circulating diseases with pandemic potentials and are constantly scanning global goings on to detect any clues of new outbreaks or new diseases. They track deaths, rumors, and unusual symptoms, taking their information from both official and unofficial sources. The use of mobile phones to track disease has gone even further in recent years, as a result of 86% of the world's population being connected to mobile coverage. On the 19th of October 2010, 10 months after a devastating earthquake hit Haiti, the Haitian Ministry of Public Health and Population was notified of a sudden surge in patients suffering from cholera. Scientists were able to use the position data from mobile phones and estimate the magnitude and trends of population movements, allowing for close to real-time monitoring of the disease outbreak. In fact, studies show that Twitter data following the 2010 earthquake accurately tracked the cholera spread, whilst being updated more regularly and nearly as accurately as the official records detecting the beginning and early progress of the epidemic. If this new disease or outbreak does start to spread through the population and governments and other authorities become increasingly aware, screening is often rolled out at high population density hotspots and travel hubs, such as airports, borders, and ports. Thermal scanners are often employed to measure the body temperature of people entering or exiting an area. If this temperature shows signs of fever, these people can then be quarantined, tested, or questioned. Currently, 
The validity of this kind of testing is up in the air at the moment, as a recent preliminary study from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine suggests that thermal scanning at airports detects less than one in five passengers arriving from a 12-hour flight who have been infected by If these small outbreaks start to make its way through the general population and it reaches a large enough scale, researchers around the world will be racing to create antibody tests. These newly developed tests will be a huge improvement over the primary testing used at the start of an outbreak, which would only be able to detect the disease while it's still active in its host. Antibody testing allows scientists to detect the presence of the disease even after the sufferer has recovered. These work through the analysis of a patient's blood and look for small organic molecules that would have been produced during the body's fight against the infection. These tests will provide concrete, quantitative numbers for how many people have been exposed to the infectious disease, allowing highly accurate tracking and disease transmission modeling. Disease modeling plays a vital role within disease surveillance and mitigation. These mathematical models are being increasingly used to understand the transmission of infections and evaluate the potential impacts of implemented control programs regarding economical impact and mortality. Epidemic modeling has been used across the world for years. But a great example of its practice was in the UK during the 2009 swine flu pandemic, where it was used to provide guidance to estimate the cost-effectiveness of intervention strategies. These estimates can often be very persuasive when making health policy decisions. The science behind tracking diseases has evolved as quickly as the diseases they are keeping an eye on. Web-based platforms have made disease reporting and surveillance more timely and accessible a massive improvement over traditional epidemiological methods which suffer over a time lag of one to two weeks. The internet promises more opportunities for real-time, accurate information and to allow authorities to accelerate knowledge discovery and reach broader audiences at a much faster pace. Timely, accessible and accurate health information is especially critical for rapidly identifying new outbreaks and improving public health outcomes. New digital technologies can serve as an important addition to traditional disease surveillance, especially in cases of new or emerging diseases, where little or no historical data exists. With further adoption of these technologies, they will be powerful weapons against future outbreaks that come, go, and mutate as the human race continues to tick on. Thank you for watching this video today. If you've enjoyed our content, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And whilst traveling all around the world, we do advise that you please practice social distancing, wash thoroughly, and keep yourself and your loved ones safe.